Let's talk about zone two training. So first, let's define what we mean by zone two, because we could substitute this here by uh, long distance, low intensity, base endurance training, aerobic exercise training, okay? The point we are going to make applies for all of those, but most people might call this zone two training. So what happens when you define zone two training by your functional threshold power, which is what most people do, right? So you have your functional threshold power and then you take certain percentages from that, for example, 120% for some VO2 max interval trainings or, for example, 70% uh, approximately is what most people use for their, um, you know, easy base aerobic zone two training, okay? So, Basically what happens, you have your FTP, if you look from in terms of like exercise intensity from rest to FTP, maybe to VO2 max, you have the FTP and then you extrapolate, for example, to let's say 70% of it, right? And you call this, okay, this is now the intensity I will use for my base zone two training whatsoever, okay? And of course, that's one way to do it. To do it. But what are the possible pitfalls and problems that you might run into when you do that? So let's think about what we want to achieve by this kind of training. We want to have a decent activation utilization of the aerobic energy metabolism, right? It's a primary aerobic training. And the main training effect in terms of, for example, mitochondria growth, but mitochondria biogenesis to improve your aerobic capacity, right, comes from having a decent oxygen turnover, so a decent oxygen uptake. Another thing you will likely be interested in is how much fat you combust, fat combustion rate. It's beneficial, I will come to that in a moment, to maximize or increase um, your fat combustion rate in this training. And very closely linked to that, what you want is you want to know and take care of your carbohydrate combustion, okay? Carbohydrate combustion is very important for two reasons. One, it is obviously connected to fat combustion because if the energy is you know, not coming from carbohydrates, it needs to come from fats and vice versa. But also because your carbohydrate stores glycogen as a form in which the muscle stores uh, carbohydrates is very limited and it takes a lot of time to replenish it. So approximately 48 hours or two days at a minimum if you have a super high meaning carbohydrate only diet in a more realistic case it will take up to three days to replenish your carbohydrate stores your glycogen stores in the muscles once they are entirely depleted. Okay so therefore if you have in mind that maybe after this zone two training you're doing the next day after and the next day after you have other trainings you want to do and for example if some of those are more intense training interval training types of of, of exercises then you really need to make sure that you don't deplete your glycogen stores because you need this precious fuel you need this energy for the upcoming trainings so therefore what you really want to look at to have a good precise training intensity for zone two is you want to have an idea about the fat and carbohydrate combustion rates, okay? And this is where it becomes tricky. Let me give you two examples. So at rest, you have some fat combustion, right? So let's say we use green here um, to look at fat combustion. And then when you increase intensity from rest to this zone two, to FTP, fat combustion rates first go up and then they go down and you know somewhere in the range of FTP they go basically to zero, okay, well, almost close to zero. And therefore you could argue, okay, well in this case my fat max, so the maximum fat combustion rate would be somewhere in this range, 70, maybe here 70 um, to 80 percent of, of the FTP value. Now the problem is fat combustion rates are highly individual between athletes and they're highly affected by training. I mean, think about it, that makes sense because we just said that actually one main benefit we try to get from zone two aerobic endurance training to, you know, 
uh, increase our fat combustion ability. So therefore, it comes at no surprise that actually fat combustion rate and fat max adapts by training. And therefore, it should be no surprise that it can change throughout the training process over several weeks or months of training. And it's also very individual and different between two athletes. Therefore, fat combustion could look like this, but it could, for example, also look like this, which means that the maximum fat combustion rate of MFO fat oxidation rate is at a lower percentage, not 70 to 80 percent, but more like 60 to 70 percent, right, of your FTP. And the first issue you see already there is that your FTP itself is not telling you at which percentage you burn the most amount of fat. And science has proven that training at fat max, so training at the intensity at which the fat combustion rate is the highest, okay, helps decreasing body fat, for example. And there's another aspect to it, which is fat needs more oxygen in order to, to, to be processed, to be combusted as a fuel. That's actually how people measure classically in the lab with a metabolic heart, your fat combustion rates. They attach you to a metabolic heart, you have this mask on your face, it measures oxygen uptake and CO2 output. And if there's excess oxygen uptake over the CO2 output, it tells the exercise physiologist that this is because you burn more fat. So the excess amount of oxygen uh, is needed to simplified speaking, burn fat in your, in, in your working muscles while you're running or cycling or rowing or do whatever you want. So fat combustion, higher fat combustion means higher oxygen uptake, which then is a better training stimulus because this is the very thing we want to train, right? It's an aerobic training. We want a higher oxygen turnover. Therefore, long story short, long wide the story to come to the point that training at fat max has not only been proven as I just mentioned, for example, to decrease body fat, it also has a bigger relative training effect on your aerobic adaptation. Therefore, potentially has a better effect to improve, for example, VO2 max, aerobic capacity, metabolic flexibility, and so on and so forth. So you really want to train at fat max. Problem is, it is not the same percentage for everyone based on the FTP. And it's a moving target, it changes by training. So just doing 70% of your FTP is not gonna cut it. You are in the range somewhere where you have some kind of fat combustion, but you're basically not training at fat max. So if you have a limited training time available for yourself per week, and you don't have your training zone dialed in to the very exact maximum fat combustion, maximum fat oxidation rates, this fat max value, and you train a little bit too high or too low, then you basically leave something on the table because the time you spend running, cycling, swimming, whatsoever, is not spent as effectively as it should be. Well, and if this is not enough already, it becomes even a little uh, more difficult or more important to look at substrate utilization when you now think of the carbohydrate combustion curve, okay? So let's stick with these two examples. Our solid line, as we see, has a higher power output at fat max, and the fat max, so the fat combustion rate is higher um, as well. Therefore, the carbohydrate combustion for this athlete would look something like this. Okay, so it goes up, it, go, it goes up uh, exponentially. In contrast, the carbohydrate combustion rate for the dashed line would look like this. It's permanently higher. Why is that? Well, for the same power output, if you have less energy coming from fats, you have to have more energy coming from carbohydrates. So if you don't have this information, then how do you know how much to fuel? How do you know how many bars, bananas, gels, whatever you prefer to take while you're training? If you don't know the actual carbohydrate combustion, how can you determine what you should be eating for best recovery after training and especially how much? How do you know how much carbohydrate you need to fuel until your next training if you don't know how much carbohydrate you combusted in the training at the first place, in the training today, so to speak, in this example? So therefore, it is not only the 
efficiency of the training stimulus on your aerobic system, on aerobic adaptation, which is important, uh, dialing this in using fat max and maximum fat combustion rate. It is also very important for recovery and for being ready and fueled and so to speak have replenished glycogen stores for the next training to know your carbohydrate combustion, which is of course very strongly interconnected to your fat combustion rate. So therefore, unfortunately, the 70% of an FTP for your zone two base training might sound and look like at a first glance like an individual training um, zone or training intensity because it's a percentage of your very FTP. But the problem is only your FTP is individual. Extrapolating, which I mean with that is going a fixed percentage down or up for some interval training programs, is not individually. It's not individualized training. If you want to have it individualized, you need to look at, for this training example, the metric you are interested in, which is in this case, because it's not an anaerobic training, it's not a high intense interval training, we'll cover that in another story. In this case, what you're interested in is, is especially burning more fats to spare carbohydrates, to have these carbohydrates available for your higher intense training, for your higher intense efforts. You want to burn more fat also because higher fat burning rate means higher oxygen uptake, which is basically a higher aerobic training stimulus and therefore it's helpful for better adaptation of your VO2 max, for example, which obviously is or arguable, maybe the single most important metric for endurance performance, health span and lifespan. So therefore, zone two training done right, don't use a fixed percentage of the FTP, dial in your fat combustion rates and carbohydrate combustion rates so that you really hit that intensity which promotes the best aerobic adaptation and allows you to understand what you should be feeling during the training and after the training to be ready for the next training session, either at the next day or the day after.